Many of you asked me about my opinion on web development trends in 2020 and maybe advice where to invest your time in order to level up your technical skills and become even more successful software engineer. I prepared this video to share my perspective on the web development trends in 2020 and show both front-end as well as back-end languages in terms of its popularity and capabilities. My name is Max and I welcome you on my channel. Probably the number one web development technology in 2020 we have to look at is a GraphQL. Doesn't matter whether you work as a front-end developer or a back-end developer, you definitely have to learn what is GraphQL and how to use it. For the last decade we get used to writing different REST or Representational State Transfer API or even SOAP API, but the GraphQL is just different. GraphQL is a query language for APIs and runtime for fulfilling those queries with the existing data. GraphQL provides a complete and understandable description of the data in your API and gives clients the power to ask for exactly what they need and nothing more and makes it easier to evolve APIs over time. GraphQL queries always return predictable results. If you will compare GraphQL, let's say, with REST API, in GraphQL you will ask only for fields and you will get a response from a backend server with only these fields which you requested. With the REST API you don't have any control over the fields and the response from a backend server. More and more platforms use GraphQL as the primary communication between a front-end and the server side. Even writing GraphQL queries is simpler and straightforward. You are basically writing a JSON object with fields and filters which you would like to use in order to send a request to a backend server for only data which you are interested in to be returned back to you. Let's talk about front-end languages. In order to build a web application or a website, we have to understand that front-end languages is probably the number one thing we have to consider for 2020. There is absolutely no way to build a website without a main web foundation, which we are going to talk next. I think it's not a surprise that the foundation of web development is based on the HTML, CSS and JavaScript. All modern browsers and websites use all these elements to represent the information in the nicest way, allowing dynamically to change the content. HTML provides a basic structure of sites, which is enhanced and modified by other technologies like CSS and JavaScript. CSS is used to control presentation, formatting and layout, and it stands for cascading style sheets. JavaScript is more complicated language than HTML or CSS. Nowadays, JavaScript is supported by all modern web browsers and is used on almost every site on the web for more powerful and complex functionality. So this is important in 2020 to know HTML, CSS and JavaScript, especially JavaScript because lots of libraries and frameworks are based on JavaScript language and we just have to understand how to write JavaScript code and JavaScript functionality. Right after this front-end basics, we have to consider PWA or Progressive Web Applications. A progressive web application is a type of application software delivered through the web. However, it's built using common web technologies including this HTML, CSS and JavaScript. The functionality of the website built using PWA approach includes working offline, push notifications and device hardware access, enabling creating user experiences similar to native applications on desktop and mobile devices. More and more website owners would like to get their websites as fast and performant as possible. So, progressive web applications is the way to go in 2020. I was surprised to find out that a TypeScript is a next level JavaScript or subset of JavaScript, which is an open source programming language that adds optional static typing to the JavaScript language. 
TypeScript is designed for development of large applications and transcompiles to JavaScript. It's interesting to notice that a TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript and existing JavaScript programs are also valid TypeScript programs. A TypeScript may be used to develop JavaScript applications for both client-side and server-side execution. The TypeScript compiler is itself written in a TypeScript and compiled to JavaScript. Give TypeScript a try in 2020 and see whether you can apply this programming language in your upcoming projects. More and more popularity and attention is getting Vue. A Vue is a progressive framework for building user interfaces. The core library is focused on the Vue layer only and is easy to pick up and integrate with other libraries or existing projects. So let's say if you have a legacy project, it wouldn't be hard to add Vue as your Vue layer and introduce new features with the help of this progressive framework. Vue is perfectly capable of powering sophisticated single-page applications when used in combination with modern tooling and supporting libraries. There are lots of interesting projects and open-source applications created with the help of Vue, such as ViewPress and Vue Storefront. I recommend to have a look at this uh, language in 2020 and give it a try. Maybe this is uh, the next language you would love to and you will continue working as a Vue developer. Another giant to have a look in 2020 is uh, React.js. React.js is an open source JavaScript library created by uh, Facebook. This library is used for building user interfaces specifically for single-page application. It's used for handling view layer for web and mobile apps. React allows developers to create large web applications which can change data without reloading the page. The main purpose of React is to be fast, scalable and simple. I decided to go with React in 2019 for my personal projects and this is something I'm going to learn and practice in 2020. And the last but not least technology which I recommend to watch in 2020 is Svelte. Previously, when I was getting familiar with such libraries and frameworks like React and Vue, I was surprised on the flexibility and amount of code I have to write compared to JavaScript libraries from the past such as jQuery. However, Svelte is even better and newer approach to building user interfaces. When traditional frameworks like React and Vue do the bulk of their work in the browser, Svelte shifts that work into a compile step that happens when you build your app. As you can see from the Svelte samples on their official website, the amount of code you have to write in order to make a progressive web application is so minimum that it definitely improves productivity and decreases development time writing web applications. I'm not surprised why Svelte is getting more and more popularity and attention in 2020. When we talk about web technologies, it's important to mention that backend languages are also an important part for building web-based applications. Usually on a website, front-end speaks to a backend in order to retrieve data and render it for a user. Also, there might be some changes or user interactions happening on a front-end and that's how a front-end can pass data back to a back-end in order for this data to be updated in a database. And when it comes to back-end languages, Python is the most popular and simple to use on a day-to-day basis. Lots of companies decided to use Python to create their apps, systems, websites and other solutions. Such digital giants as Google, Instagram, Facebook, Netflix and others have chosen this programming language and there are multiple reasons why they did it. Python is object-oriented high-level programming language with dynamic semantics. Compared to many languages, Python is easy to learn and use. Its functions can be carried out with simpler commands and less text than most competing languages. And this might explain why it's soaring in popularity with developers, coding students and tech companies. 
It's often used as a scripting language for web applications. This means that it can automate specific series of tasks, making it more efficient. The language is used in web development, data analysis, machine learning, DevOps, educational purposes and other areas. The second most popular backend language is PHP. Over 80% of websites are written in PHP, and that's mostly because of its popularity to insert the code into HTML. Lots of popular CMS like WordPress, Drupal, and popular e-commerce solutions like Magento, and frameworks like Symfony, Laravel, Zend, they all use PHP. PHP is widely used open source scripting language that's easily suited for web development and can be embedded into HTML. The best things in using PHP are that it's extremely simple for a newcomer, but offers many advanced features for a professional programmer.